Where it lay in place, this is uh, August 13th, 1996, and we're doing these interviews on, uh, this interview is concerned with Harold Mangus, who was the uh, uh, radar man in the, in the European theater during World War II. Uh, this is part of a series. We've done a number of these interviews. Our cameraman today is Mike Hall, who is executive director of uh, Montgomery County Historic Society. And the other uh, person here is Claire Chamberlain. Uh, I'm Bob Wernley, and uh, Claire and I are both members of the Crawford the Legion Post, and we've been doing these interviews to bring back the memories of people who served in World War II. Uh, and Harold uh, is a native of Crawfordville. And Harold, do you, you understand that uh, this interview that you're giving to us today is going to be put on videotape, and uh, one of the copies is going to go into the Harvestville Public Library and be there available for anybody to look at. And uh, what you say here is going to go down in history. Yes, I, I understand. <laughs> You'll be like a number of the other people that are given these interviews. Uh, now, uh, to get started here, uh, Harold, why don't you tell us a bit of, about your uh, background and your relationship to the county? Well, I was born here in Montgomery County and uh, worked at the post office for 36 years, that minus four years in the in the Air Force, and uh, I uh, I still. Uh, I'm proud of it being this in this uh, county, and uh, I'm a member of the American Legion, also, and uh, as a pastime, I uh, red coat at the hospital uh, at least once a week. Now I used to go a little, a little uh, more than that, but I I've slowed down to one time a week now. What was your date of birth? Uh, May 1, 1917. And uh, were you born right in, in, in Crawfordville? In that, no, in the house of Whitesville. All right, down where the railroad cross crossed. Right, 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 close to it. And uh, how long uh, did you marry somebody here in Montgomery County? Yes, I, I grew up, I went to Whitesville grade school and then Crawfordville High School. And I went a year, a year and a half at Wabash College. And uh, then I stuck farm for a few years and started working at the post office and uh, married uh, Mary Shepherd, who, uh, who was a Crawfordville resident, or although she was born in Williamsport. And we've been married for 46 years. And how many children do you have? We have two uh, children, a boy who's still here, here in Crawfordsville, and a girl who is, uh, works for, or as a, is a nurse and works for uh, a clinic in uh, Atlanta. And her husband who works with a wire corporation. He's an engineer in a wire corporation. Do you have any grandchildren? One, one grandchild. He graduated from high school just a few months ago, and I, I was there. We were there to uh, be to celebrate. Where, where, where did he graduate? He graduated from a Atlanta uh, oh. school. Uh, oh, at least in Atlanta. Atlanta, yes. So we had, we had no grandchildren, no family real close, right, at the present time. Your, uh, is Bill Mangus your brother? Bill Mangus is my brother, and I have a brother, Waller, at, at Mace. And I had, I did have five. I did have five sisters and three brothers. One, uh, one, uh, one boy and one and three girls are deceased already. All right. When when were you taken into service? Or tell us about start in the service. Well, I 
got a greeting from the I got a greeting from the uh, president. Uh, they wanted me, so I on November 17th, three weeks before Pearl Harbor, I was drafted at uh, Fort Harrison, and uh, on December the first, they gave me an opportunity to enlist in the Air Force for three years rather than uh, take what comes. So uh, I did that and went to a uh, radio school at Scott Field, Illinois. And our our uh, program, the original program, was 26 weeks, but they shoved us through in eight weeks. And then at that uh, at that time, I, I got an opportunity. They asked if the, for volunteers to uh, go into the radar business, which was uh, quite big in the, for saving of uh, London. And uh, so I volunteered for that. And as far as the one, the other fellows in my school over there, they've got the right B-26, B-24 bombers and uh, flying fortresses in Europe. So I, I kind of missed out on the, some of the hectic times. Did you uh, know when you first went to a field here in the United States? That was where. Well, the first flying we done was from Orlando, Florida. All right. Where'd you go from there? Well, we uh, after staying there quite a while and, and uh, training on American equipment, uh, we moved to Kissimmee, and then uh, in March of '93, uh, we were sent over. We had, we were activated and sent overseas. Uh, How did you get over there? We. Uh, Took a boat from a Canadian boat, uh, Empress of Canada, and which was was most of was 90% Canadians uh, from the New York Harbor, and landed at Liverpool eight days later. We were traveling without escort, and uh, then we were, we were assigned to British squadrons. Uh, what date would this be about from where the war started? And that was well. That was actually. We spent over a little over about a year in, in Florida. So as I say, the American equipment was not really ready to grow, and so uh, we were we lost some time. Uh, but when would it have been you went overseas? And uh, we went overseas on uh, March of '93. Uh, of uh, 40, 43. 43. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you trained where? We, well, we uh, the, ra the radar men and navig radar navigators trained with uh, other German, uh, ra ra other British navigators, and uh, up in the upper part of England, while the pilots stayed at an airport in the middle of England. And uh, then after about three weeks, why we joined the, our pilots and we started flying together in the British bullfighter, which uh, is, this is a replica of. Uh, a two-engine plane with uh, four cannons and three machine guns. And where where would a uh, radar man be in that? The radar man sits here. The pilot then is up here. up on the, on the top. There. Yeah. And there was a passageway where you could get up to stand behind the pilot. So uh, we stayed in England until July the 1st of 43. And then we uh, got our papers to go to Africa. The ground troop uh, went by a boat and the uh, flying crews flew their planes around. Is this the kind of this, plane we flew? This is the plane we flew. We flew around France and Portugal and, and landed at Gibraltar. To spent about an hour and a half there while we refueled. And then uh, we flew on to Algiers. What does the, what does the uh, airport at Gibraltar look like? Well, it, was, it was just a big, wide, flat place over the side of the, the mountain, and Spain was on one over one wing tip, and, and uh, the mountain, the rock of Gibraltar was on the other side, and the city was kind of set built on the edge of the rock. Was it hard to get in there? No, it, it had a lot of traffic, but uh, they were operated smoothly. Of course, when we flew down, the squadron flew down. They flew at about 15-minute intervals. They didn't all come and land one time to be refueled. Not much uh, space to land, was there? No, no, it was uh, the edge of the, you landed on one edge of the water and came to stop on the other edge. 
Yeah. All right, uh, where did you go from there? Oh, from there we went to Algiers, and uh, then we uh, would send planes uh, up to Oran and down to uh, uh, other places. Uh, Oran, you mean? O-R-A-N. O-R-A-N, O-R-A-N, yeah. And then uh, they were just stay set overnight, be, uh, be under on alert. And then we finally uh, started daytime patrols between Italy and, uh, and Sardinia, because at the time of the Anzia, the beachhead, and uh, we flew in three groups of planes, and we got we we shot down some some of the group uh, shot down the, some transport planes between Sardinia and Italy, and uh, then uh, we come back, and then after after the Germans abandoned Sardinia and, and Italy and Corsica, we, uh, we took up bases up there, and then we flew from there, which made us closer to the north part of the Mediterranean. So that's when we started our intruding uh, raids where we had to shot targets of opportunity, mainly railroad yards and maybe in traveling trains and anything else that uh, looked hostile. So, uh, of course, uh, that, uh, during our patrols we didn't have too many casualties. There was a few uh, fatalities, but after Intruding, uh, it was not. It was common that, uh, that people would take off in the morning and or at night, and never we, they never come back. And we had uh, one. Uh, they had some lost in the in the Mediterranean. We, had, we were on patrol sometime searching for evidence for lost planes. But uh, that. Uh, what What is a radar man? Do well, all this is going on. Well, <coughs> oh, our 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 thing, our purp I main purpose was to intercept planes. Now, a ground control radar radar would have a bogey plane that they think is the enemy, so they would call in and identify it, and we go in. They they put us within our range of our, uh, our equipment, and we fall. We come in 200 feet behind and blow and below them, and we'd have to look up and we could see their exhaust very plain and uh, we had to identify whether it was tr true or whether it was friendly or foe and then uh, then we'd shoot them down. Mm -hmm. we could, did, did the enemy have radar? Well, the, the British radar was so much better than the German radar that, uh, that, that we were not permitted to fly over over uh, enemy territory for until the end of the, until the war was just about over, and uh, for that reason we were out uh, patrolling one night and they put us on two buoys right close to southern France, and we did we got shots in both of them. One of them didn't return any fire. The others had uh, every time we shot took three passes, and every time we shot well, eight, they shot back at our at our firing. But uh, did they hit you? We didn't get we didn't get a scratch, but uh, we got both of them. We got an engine to fire on them, and they turned off the to right over the France, and we had to, we could not go we could not follow them down to make sure they got down. So we had to turn back. That was disappointing. Uh, Claire, they'll ask you what, what do you know what German radar was like, or did they have? Well, they had, they had radar, but it wasn't it was not it was it was uh, not near as good as as. Uh, um, uh, the British, the British really went for a radar, and that, actually that saved London because they send a few planes to protect whenever they, they didn't have to have, have patrols when they come, well, they they could send their planes right to them. So that's uh, and uh, of course now our the radar our radar was uh, the lower you got was uh, the ground we had good ground clutter which uh, eliminated the picture. A lot of times, so we had a hard time chasing some of those planes down low because about the only way you could get them was get up the moon path, and see a moon path, and see them down the moon path. Then they could get them with shots. Our outfit shot several down uh, by getting them in the moon path, but the radar itself on the ground was practically useless. But uh, up at 10,000 feet, we had a range of 10,000 feet where it was clear. 
What uh, what what is it like when you're sitting up in there in that in that bubble and you see the uh, act act coming at you? Well, it's uh, it's yeah. We at one time we did bomb, uh, at the tail end we, when they flying B-61. We did carry two 500-pound bombs and we bombed the Villa Franca Airport one time. And I estimated at least 12 gun positions there. They shot the tracers. We could see see the tracers. Every six bullet I think supposed to be tracer. And it just looked like a water hose coming at coming at you. And then the time you got up to 4,000 feet, well, we where we were. Why? Uh, it's all behind us. It was pretty, but it, it was. Uh, it couldn't reach. Uh, I was. I was just there a second ahead of when they went through. So that. That was lucky. You know, oh. Well, I, I was, I'm glad that uh, we, they didn't have radar as good as radar today, or it'd been different. Were you flying alone? Uh, I don't know. Were you in a, uh, other planes with you? Uh, not the, the only time we were, were in groups was in the daylight flights over the. Where we stayed away from the land, so we wouldn't be afraid of a single-engine fighter. Because these are no match for a single-engine fighter. Uh, we we actually lost a one one ship that got too close to Sardinia, and a single-engine German fighter came out and got him. And the other two planes in that flight escaped. But uh, the uh, this is for really for night and, and bad weather when you had a chance to hide. But we were no match for settling in fighters. Mm -hmm. So you were a night fighter, principally. Principally, yes. Mm -hmm. And then our, in our, our nighttime rage, of course, you see movies of uh, daytime rage. Of course, we never carried cameras because you know, we just wasn't, I don't know, just wasn't a good place to take pictures at night. That's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, were you synchronized uh, in your raids with daytime bombing raids? Well, uh, we worked individually. Uh, they, of course, the daytime fighters went out too. I don't know how intelligence uh, got us uh, just what to do, but uh, but we went out nights and they went out days. And they, as after we got the P-61s, which is a uh, American. A different radar, and uh, they uh, they were more speedier, more speed, more power, more speedy, and uh, then uh, this was a British plane. Th this is a British. Well, they call it reverse Ren Lend Lease. We had we gave written planes from Lend Lease. This was reverse Lend Lease. They they charged it against the against their Lend Lease. Mm -hmm. Who made that plane? Uh, you know what kind of? No, they had. Uh, oh yeah, Bristol. Bristol, Bristol mm -hmm. boat fighters. Is that a Rolls Royce? Yeah, well, uh, there was there were some of them later had Rolls Royce engines. And we did. We had radio engines. Two thousand. We did have radios. Yeah. And. Uh, you said later on you got American plane. Yeah, they. Uh, well, the last. Uh, Oh, uh, six months or so, we uh, got American planes, and uh, they were heavier armed, and uh, we did mostly in the night intruding to them. Actually, the the uh, Germans, we saw rec reconnaissance planes a few times, but the actual German activity was uh, fairly low after the D-Day front. I mean, everything was pulled, uh, everything was valued. So we were we were close to a static front. Uh, we weren't too many miles from the active front in Germany in Italy when uh, when uh, well, well in fact we flew out over uh, German lines, supposed German lines, or they said to, and dropped leaflets urging their surrender. We just dropped them out, let them float over the over the country, and of course I had no report of how much good the leafless did, but I suppose if someone took it up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Being stationed in Italy, did you have any part in D-Day? No, uh, that, that's, uh, that happened while we was uh, doing our normal patrols. And I say things are moderately dead there, because they had everything worried about the front.
Did you know that D-Day was taking place? No, well, everybody knew that this, it was going to happen sometime, yeah. But uh, no, we, not, we didn't know the actual date. Now, uh, what uh, what happened after the, uh, uh, I assume that you, that they picked out a place for you to have an airfield there in Italy. Where, where, where was your airfield? Well, our main one was uh, Pisa, where the Leaning Tower is. Oh. You get to see the Leaning Tower? Yeah, yeah I, some, some of them flew, flew between it and the church. Uh, they weren't supposed to, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> I was flying, with, I was flying, my pilot at that time was the commanding officer of the squadron and uh, he didn't do things like that. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, would have been there on the coast, uh, uh, of course Pisa is, Pisa is on near the coast. Yeah, yeah well it's up the river, Arno River a little bit. They, they had a flood while we were there, we had to abandon one field and move everything out because uh, Danger of flood. Oh, okay. Uh, then, when you hit the, uh, they took up the position on the air airfield in uh, Italy. Did you move further north after that? No, after that, uh, 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 we continued from. Uh, we were in that area all the time. I got to visit Florence and Naples. And and the Rome and, and uh, things like that. And, and then of course you got to meet the Italian people. How, how the, what kind of reception did you have? Well, they, they were all friendly. They were, I, I didn't see the, really see the, uh, quite the uh, nice people like uh, Italians are now. I mean, uh, they were more, I don't know, they were pretty hard to get, working pretty hard to get something to eat. Oh. Did you ever see a German? Uh, not, not live. Or, uh, one of the crews that shot down the, one of the low flying things, uh, they got to meet their captors, their captors, but uh, no, I didn't uh, get to see a live German. Oh, uh, okay. You have anything you want to ask him? Clear the How many missions did you have? Uh, uh, I had 98 operational patrols and uh, and uh, 16 intruding flights, and uh, a lot of a lot of some of my time was helping train the replacements that come over, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, Finally, uh, my, my pilot finally became the CEO of the squadron towards the end. Mm -hmm. Was he a major? He was a lieutenant colonel at that time. Lieutenant colonel. Since he he he, he retired from uh, from uh, as a brigadier general from uh, after being with NASA for quite a while. He, he helped him. He was helping uh, working with NASA when he was Apollo 11. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but he's, uh, he died of a heart attack the last year. As uh, a number of our my buddies are leaving this earth. Most of your work was at uh, night, but did, did you ever see or suspect that you saw an early German jet plane? No, it, it was, of course, uh, used to propeller speeds. I, I couldn't understand how it was. Jet planes could be flying faster without propellers. But I guess I didn't know much about science. Then. But uh, near yeah. the end of the war, yeah. uh, at high altitudes, I guess they couldn't stay up too long. No, and some reported they did see them. Oh no, well they didn't. They didn't. As I say, everything was north. We were on the backside of the fighting, as far as that goes. After after we got through uh, Casino in, in uh -huh. Italy, well, Italy died down completely. And, uh, and after uh, on the VE day, I was I just left the squadron and went down to Naples, and I, I was celebrate I celebrated VE day in Naples, waiting for a boat to come home. And uh, after I left, 
then the squadron did go on some daylight patrols when they seen that there was no single fighter engine fighters left in Italy. They'd taken everything mm -hmm. out. And now, you started out as a buck private. Yeah, you know, when I, I was made a flight officer when I completed my American uh, tour and then uh, later made second lieutenant, first lieutenant. and, and when I was flying with the SEAL, well, then I got to be made captain. And uh, how far east in Africa did you ever go? T Tunis. I, I was, uh, we, Tunis is, uh, we flew from uh, nearby Tunis and uh, we visited Tunis. So I got to see the Arab countries, well, Arab countries, I should say. They call them Arab or huh? <laughs> <laughs> Since they went into the pest control. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, uh, what about uh, Tunis? How did you, did, were you there long? No, we just spent an afternoon in, oh. in there just, just to visit. The, as oh. Being close by, we drove through Tunis. They've been fighting over Tunis for thousands of years. Yeah, it doesn't look like much to me. <laughs> Most of the time it's close to Algiers. Of course, I got into Algiers a few times. They had one one raid just right as uh, Germans raided the Algiers Harbor and bombed some ships and everything. But we were were just getting set up, and uh, they had British squadrons. The same they sent British squadrons in on it and didn't give us a chance. We uh, might have got an early baptism. You say you went to Wabash College. Uh, when would that have been? Well, I, I would have been, would have saw, uh, 30, I've been in the class of 38. I did uh, some uh, follow, uh, I think I went to the uh, 25th anniversary of the 38th class of 38. Uh -huh. but, uh, Remember back in your Wabash days, you didn't have any recollections of that? Well, uh, there was a, a Pi Gamma student, which I knew at Wabash, that was a pilot in another night fighter squadron, and I saw him two or three times over over in Italy. In fact, he, when I took a had a rest leave on the Isle of Capri, at Naples from Sardinia, he I flew in his B-25. The squadron had a B-25, and uh, he, he flew us over to Naples to this uh, rest center. Uh, what was his name? Uh, was he a Lee? Yeah, part? no, he was in Carpenter. Lee, oh. Lee was his name, I think. And I, I, I haven't recalled his name for so long, I forgot. Huh. But, uh, Ever hear anything of him afterwards? No, he was killed after. He, oh. was, he was killed. In the war? In the war, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, got, I did have a nice rest leave in Caen in southern France. We, from uh, Corsica, we flew over to Caen, to Nice, landed in Nice, and then went over to Caen and spent eight days there. I suppose it been a week, but bad weather gave me an extra day. Mm -hmm. You ever get together with your old friends in the, in the service? Well, actually, yes, yes so we're quite active. Uh, in uh, 1986, my sister was in uh, Colorado, and she ran into the, the on television, they had uh, about the reunion, and uh, so she got, sent, her, sent, my, sent my address in, and so I got contacted, and so the next and two years later at Dayton, Ohio, we were able to go. There was only four from my squadron. That these that was for all 22 squadrons. And uh, and uh, when they the Dayton, there was only four of my squadrons of fellow flyers. See, we a lot of us were there for almost a two years. But together, we were there not just to fly the night. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, we've had individual squadron uh, reunions four or five times in between those two years. I it had two in Las Vegas, but I've never been able to go on. And I missed one in Washington, the, where Boeing plant was. And they had a real good entertainment from Boeing. Entertained them pretty good at uh, Seattle, so I regret missing that. But as I say, there's several of them 
we're at the age where they don't live forever, I guess. No. So. So. Was there any talk, uh, you said you, where you were on DE Day, was there any talk to just ship you right on over to the Pacific? Well, well, actually, my uh, my pilot was a was a eater beaver, you might say, and he he was on boat and go heading through the for the Pan Panama Canal to go to west without even going home, and uh, and uh, he got the word uh, about a day or two, a day or two before they got the Panama Canal, and they turned around and took him to New York, mm -hmm. but he was. Uh, he uh, thought maybe I ought to be going going home. A lot of them went home for some of them went home for uh, a uh, leave, and uh, so uh, that was it. Why, well, uh, Harold, you you had your uh, you've got something down below here. You you had framed your. Uh, insignia from the service and I wonder if you just run over those uh, items that you have there explain them okay this this is the wing we wore on our coats uh, with a is a regular uh, observer wings we were actually radar observers is what they call us and these are the 12th Air Force insignia and there's of course parts of the uniform and there's the, what I wore in the cap, and there's the Your cap. captain's bars, which uh, was dismissed as as captain. And there's a air medal, which I had the eight eight clusters to it. How did you get that? Well, it was just certain areas of performance. After certain operations, they uh, awarded the air medals. And I was there for two years, so mm -hmm. I had a, quite a long time. And uh, this is the Distinguished Flying Cross, which I got for uh, bombing at Villa Franca Airport under the real uh, heavy anti-aircraft anti fire. Was that in France? As in, yeah, in France. That's in, po, in the southern part of the Po Valley, over, over the, not too far from Venice. Is that where you saw the anti-aircraft fire? Yes. That's where the saw the good aerial show. What you're saying is that was a pretty hairy well, it, mission. It uh, it was uh, it was a lot of there was a lot of, looked like a lot of flight, a lot of anti aircraft to me. Did you lose any planes in, in your group? Oh oh yes, uh, we, we lost quite a few in that intruding. Uh, I said well. Uh, one place in, in uh, Sardinia where I I had uh, I was a roommate of uh, had four roommates with two sets two crews of two pilots two uh, radar men uh, both of them were, went out in a few days apart and never come back so mm. it, that was a little bit shocking mm -hmm. yeah would be were you married at the time you were no, no. married after you got back yes. Why don't we take a break here, we can... Okay. Go ahead and uh, a very interesting question that Mike Hall asked you here. How did your uh, how did you communicate with your with your pilot from there from your place in that bubble? Oh, well, uh, we uh, spoke by uniform by uh, intercom, and uh, whenever the, the if the uh, plane would turn we would we would fall and, and our position our, our uh, ideal location was about 200 feet behind and below him and there we could see the exhaust flames real plane and see the outline of the plane against the sky that's a german plane yes the german plane and uh, of course you definitely want to identify a plane before you fire but even if you, you should uh, you think you might be uh, friendly he, he might, uh, he might, he couldn't, might be, but you, you could just couldn't tell. But how did you tell? Well, by the, by the shape of the planes, we had aircraft recognition quite often. And of course the Heinkel 111 is very common, easy it is to uh, 
to describe. Mm -hmm. Could you communicate with other planes in your group? Well, the, the pilot could. He had the. Uh, he had the. Uh, but most, uh, like uh, our three plane formations, they kept radio silence as much as they could because uh, nobody knows who's listening. And did you have um, a briefing before you go on a mission? Oh, uh, tell us about that. Oh, oh yes. Uh, well, it, of course, uh, there were several briefings of the whole squadron, and then. Uh, we, of course, we had intelligence uh, people which uh, told us what, what was what, what we were supposed to do, and uh, when we come back, why they took a full report of the flight. Did, uh, how did you find that uh, when you were over there, when you got over there, and you these English people, how did they receive you? Well. Uh, we ate at a British mess and a British uh, fly airfield, and uh, the gals at the service enjoyed the Americans. They thought they were more uh, friendly than the British people. They, they, as I say, they, but uh, no, they, they were supposed to be reserved, but they seemed ordinary people. I was a child. Well, their their chow was uh, not not the best. <laughs> That's what I heard. <coughs> they uh, had plenty of uh, orange mar orange marmalade. That's the only thing they had plenty of. And uh, I can't stand that to today. You didn't like? Do you like mutton? No, I, I don't know. They I don't know. I don't know if they had mutton. I don't. Uh, but uh, of course, our chow, uh, our chow was uh, not the best. Our cooks couldn't do too much to it or something. I know uh, Tyron Power's wife uh, was ate with our squadron one time, and I bet she never had a worse worse meal in her life. Did, well, excuse me, Bob. Yeah, go ahead. Did you uh, shoot at uh, a caravan or caravans or? Convoys, those enemies, and enemy, and maybe trooper trains. Well, we, yeah, we we shot up trains several nights, and uh, we actually dropped uh, bombs on a bridge on a pole river there. What happened? Well, we got a good explosion. But as I say, our bombing runs is the, is the tail end. Uh, I don't know. I think I think it was two, 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 three bombing runs is all I. Went myself. Did you have to have a bombardier on your plane then? And no. An additional? No, the pilots took care of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think maybe that's about all we need to cover. Sure do. Thank you, Harold. And, uh, Thank you, Harold. Uh, okay, we're glad that. To we're glad we got you in on this because we, we've done a lot of these, haven't we, Claire? I yes, we have. Yeah. Well, I appreciate what you did for America. You know, sometimes this, this is forgotten, and uh, a lot of us put our lives on the line uh, for this great country, and we thank you for that. I'm, I'm proud to have uh, fought for our country, and glad to be a member of the American Legion. Thank you. Thanks a lot.